Hello everyone, my name is Kinetic and welcome to my first impressions video of Arcage, a new MMORPG expected to release sometime this year in 2014 for North America and EU. It's currently available already in Korea where it originated from, from XL Games, and also in Russia. It is for North America and Europe right now in an alpha stage and will probably go into a closed beta next month in June and maybe release sometime this fall uh, in 2014 for North America and EU. I've been playing the game, I find it really, really interesting, and I would like to, with this first video, just give you kind of a rundown of what Arc Age is about and uh, what makes it similar, what makes it different from the sea of MMORPGs that we've seen come out over the last 10 plus years. And I've been there, I've played so many of these games from the MMO genre that I can't even keep count. From AAA developers to indie developers, I've really tried to play so many of them. And uh, Arcage, I think, is very similar, but also very different, again, to a lot of those MMOs, and I would like to try and give you an idea of of what to expect and whether this game is worth your time. Probably one of the first things that you want to know, is it pay to play? No, it is going to be a free to play MMORPG and like Rift, who is also under the publishing of uh, Treyon, you can pay for a patron status, which gives you some extra benefits, and I will talk about that uh, a little bit later down in this video. But it is not in a pay to win type of window. You can play and access pretty much everything in the game for free, which I find really, really interesting and actually impressive because there's so much about Arcage. To, uh, to talk about that I can't even fit it into this short impressions video. I hope to make more videos in the near future to talk about the different gameplay aspects of it, but I just want to give you a quick rundown and a, an informed opinion on what to expect and what Arc Age is about. It is by Korean developer XL Games, and that might make you cringe a little bit if you've had experience with uh, Korean MMOs in the past. And I know exactly how you feel probably about that, because when I think of Korean MMORPGs, I think of grind, I think of massive time sinks, a lot of repetition, and not a lot of satisfaction. Thankfully, Arcage doesn't really fit into that. I mean, there are some things I think that will remind you uh, a, a lot of a Korean game, but as far as unfulfilling gameplay, I, I really don't think that's what Arcage amounts to. And if it did, I wouldn't even be making this video for you. You can own land, you can own houses, you can own boats, cars, horses, tons of other mounts besides horses like donkeys, uh, lions, you can build farms, you can craft, you can do trade runs. There is so much content in this game that uh, it's actually quite daunting sometimes to, uh, to think about, but I think that also makes it very attractive. And it should be full of activity. After all, it's already been out for a while now in Korea and in Russia. So the game already has quite a bit of content and quite a lot of polish to it thanks to all of that uh, all that previous testing for other countries and things like that. So now that it's coming out for North America and EU sometime this year, we're getting a, actually a really, really nice product, I think. Something that is going to release with much more than what the average brand new MMO offers when they first come out. You can almost kind of look at it as like a game that's already got an expansion attached to it. There's so much stuff in Arcage. The big aspects of, of what Arcage offers are the open world PvP and the really crazy crafting system, like really deep end complicated, interestingly complicated crafting system that is in Arcage. Um, you essentially are going to, for the first 30 levels, be in a PvE situation where the game will teach you lots of different aspects about travel, about combat and things like that, about crafting, farming if you wish to get involved in and stuff like that. And then from 30 and beyond you will start to go into hostile territory where you can be attacked by all sorts of different types of people from your own faction and from opposite uh, faction and, and guilds and things like that in Arcage. 
And that's also one of the things that makes the crafting actually really, really interesting. You may wonder, how does crafting in PvP mix in into itself? Well, essentially, in order to, to get the most wealth from your crafts and things that you, uh, you are making in the game, you will have to make uh, trade runs to different areas of the game, some of them overseas in a boat that you or somebody else has made to go to other areas of the game, uh, to another conti continent, excuse me, uh, to be able to give those goods to somebody and to receive a, a large reward for that. That's how crafting or trading and PVP kind of all mix together and make for a really, really interesting experience in Arc Age. And you don't actually have to participate in either one if you don't want to. So for example, if you're just purely interested in PVE or purely interested in only PVP, you can do that. There's nothing stopping you from just being a farmer, for example, and making money and stuff like that, or just being a PVP player, uh, doing guild versus guild battles, or just griefing the shit out of people uh you know in different areas you can totally do that in arc age there's a lot of player driven uh experience from this game it, it it's not a theme park style of mmorpg and in fact i believe that it's the closest thing that we can probably get to in this 21st century of mmo RPGs to what is a sand a true sandbox experience in an MMO RPG. Before I continue on and talk about all these other different aspects of Arc Age, I do want to probably for the most part in this first impressions video give you an idea of what the gameplay, the combat, character progression, and the questing is like in Arc Age because arguably that's going to make up the bulk of your experience. I do want to talk about crafting, but it's such a massive topic that I'm definitely going to have to save that for another video in the future. So let's talk about the combat, the gameplay. How does it feel? I think that it's actually quite nice. It's not uh, a, a super impressive aspect of Arc Age by any means, but it is certainly satisfying. It has nice animations. Uh, you have lots of different weapons that you can choose from, and the the skill system is probably one of the most interesting that I've seen, especially the way it ties into your character progression. When you first make a character, you will start as any one class uh, of five or six, I think, from shadow play, uh, battle, rage, sorcery, and things like that, which of course is like melee, like thief type of style, uh, mage, and stuff like that, right? So you'll start as one of these basic classes. Later on at levels 5 and 10, what you will do is you will unlock new skill sets. And so you will have the option to choose a completely different type of gameplay style. So for example, you may start with uh, archery, okay? So you've got a bow and you're pew pewing away at enemies and stuff like that. What, then you get to level 5, you can actually choose a sorcery path. So you can start using magic or you can choose a defensive tank kind of skill set and, and what I mean by skill set is basically a skill tree that you will work your way from the top to bottom and you will invest your skill points that you get at certain intervals of leveling to unlock new abilities from your skill sets. At level 10 you get a third skill set and again this can be anything that you want so you can go with an archery, defensive, uh, witchcraft combination and so you'll have a bow shooting arrows you'll have defensive magical shields and you'll be able to like fear enemies and stuff like that with witchcraft it's a really rich system of character customization that essentially gives players the ability to make just about any kind of class they could possibly imagine and I've heard that there are up to or over I should say a hundred different combinations of class builds that you can make in Arc Age and I believe it having seen it over the course of my own leveling and questing and things like that I've seen a lot of the possibilities that are available for making your character unique in, in your fighting style in Arc Age. When it comes to questing in Arc Age there's really nothing 
that groundbreaking at all about what you're doing in the game as you are questing and leveling and stuff like that. Um, it's pretty much the, the same type of experience that you've come to expect from previous MMOs over the past couple of years. You're going to find an NPC, he's going to talk to you with an icon over his head, and he's going to tell you to go to this area to kill this many monsters, collect this many items, or something like that, right? And then he's that's going to lead you on to another quest, probably to you know continue on your journey. Pretty much the standard experience that we uh, we understand about MMORPGs. That's not to say that questing in Arcage is incredibly boring, and in fact, I, I find it's actually quite immersive for some reason or another. It could be that I'm face-to-face -face talking to an NPC or something like that, but uh, it is it is familiar, very familiar in a lot of ways, but um, it's satisfying, I think, and it's also very streamlined. I don't feel like there's a lot of excessive sidetracking or that I'm going to a lot of boring areas or backtracking or circling or something like that. Everything feels, for the most part efficient when it comes to bouncing around different areas going from point A to point B and stuff like that um, so it's it seems like there's a good amount of polish to the way that they've laid out your quests and stuff like that as you're going from one area to another you will also encounter new situations where you have the opportunity to take extra quests you'll be distracted by maybe a signpost or an NPC on the side of the road that needs help or you know wants you to to take on an extra objective or something like that and you're more than welcome to go ahead and take that if you want or continue on with your questing and there's there's that about Arcage also that gives you a little bit of extra freedom I think in uh, in the game and within the quests themselves there is e even some interesting variables uh, going on here Probably one of the things that stands out most to me is the early bird and overachievement uh, ratings for doing quests. So let's say, for example, an NPC tells you to go out there and kill 10 kobolds, right? Or something like that. You may get bored once you've killed the seventh one or something like that, and you'll go, ugh, oh, I just want to maybe kill one more and get this quest over with or something like that. You can actually do that. Let's say, for example, that instead of killing 10, you can kill 8 or something like that. You can actually go ahead and, with only 8 kills out of 10, go talk to the NPC and they will say, okay, well that's good enough, I suppose, and they'll give you a reduced amount of experience and a reduced amount of money, but at least you're done with the quest and you can move on to something else if you're bored of doing whatever that activity is. Of course you can complete the quest and get the full reward for killing 10 kobolds, but if you happen to be killing a few extra, or maybe you have a vendetta against kobolds or something like that, you can actually go ahead and, let's say for example, kill 12 and you will get an extra progress reward when you go back to the NPC and turn in your quest. So you'll get extra XP, you'll get extra money, and then you can actually go up to what is called an overachiever or overachievement uh, rating for your quest. So maybe it might be 15 kobolds killed or something like that. And then you can go in talk to that NPC and they'll be like, wow, that was amazing, and give you extra XP and a significant amount of extra money as well for completing an extra amount of that objective. And I find that really, really nice for this game, or for MMOs in general, really. I mean, if I have to go back to this type of questing where I'm talking to an NPC uh, with icons over their heads and stuff like that, then at least it, it has something a little bit different about it that doesn't make it feel uh, so generic when it comes to questing. Having said all that, by this point in the video, I'm pretty sure that most of you out there have begun to sway one way or the other as to not being interested or wanting to know more about Arc Age. If you are interested in knowing more about the game, definitely check out the official website. I'll have a link to that in the description of this video. And subscribe to my channel as I will be showing off more impressions, gameplay, and even some guides about things in Arc Age in the near future. Thanks for watching this video, let me know what you think in the comment section below, click the like button, and stay tuned for more videos coming up soon. My name is Kinetic, I'll see you next time.